If you've got a home computer, there are several graphics packages around that'll let you produce and manipulate 3D images yourself. But now for this week's news and previews. If you've already finished Sonic 2, take heart. This week saw Sonic Tuesday Mark II when the Game Genie codes were released for Sonic's second adventure. Now you can customise the game to set yourself new challenges, or if you're having problems, you can put in some brilliant cheats to get past the tricky bits. Enter NN8AAAD2 to start Sonic with 99 lives. Or you can make Sonic invisible by typing in the code A-L-T-A-C-A-8-N, which makes the game a lot harder because you can't see him. But the best effect puts a rocket under Sonic so he whizzes through all the levels. Now you get that by entering C-B-V-T-C-A-E-2. All 42 Sonic 2 Game Genie codes are in the data blast at the end of the show. And next week we're doing a special feature on cheat devices, so watch this space. Here's a sneak preview of Dr. Franken 2, due out soon on the Game Boy. The stars are still the good Doctor's creations, Frankie and Bitsy. But this time our hero has a problem with the electricity board. He can't pay a mega bill, so he's got to hunt high and low in an effort to find old Dr. Frankenbone's money. Go to it, Frankie. New Year's resolutions. Mm. Number one, do not get kissed by Violet. Yes. Number two, take less exercise. Yes. Right, deep techies, this is a cheat that lets you skip straight to level two on Steel Empire on the Mega Drive. All you do is hold down B and keep pressing start. Here we go, flicking through all the option screens. Wait for it, wait for it. There you are, on level two. Amazing. Right, I better carry on with my New Year's resolutions. Um, number three, be nicer to Spike in the Hedgehog. Yes, all right. Um, number four. Do not get kissed by Andy. Yes, that's a definite. Oh, horrid. Don't worry, Nam. There's no chance of that. This is the latest Mega Drive from Japan. It's called the Mega CD, and not surprisingly, the software comes on CDs, which you pop in just like you do with your music center at home, close it up, and then you have to select CD-ROM up here, press the A button, and sit back and enjoy some wonderful graphics. This is Afterburner 3, and as you can see, the graphic quality is quite incredible. It looks just like it does in the arcade. Amazing stuff. Mega CD games won't run any faster, but they will be bigger, and the reason is because you can get so much more information on a CD than you can on a standard console cartridge. For example, a CD could easily cope with all the information of this, the entire Oxford English Dictionary. In fact, this one does. All 20 volumes. Ah! More lemmings! This is a CD TV, which is basically an Amiga painted black with a CD drive. You can also get the CD drive separately to plug into your telly so you can play your CD games that way. Basically, it works like a very powerful disk drive. This is a flight sim that's being developed for it. The fractal backgrounds are coming straight off the CD. Also, there are loads of educational packages and games that are currently being developed for it, but as it comes with keyboard, mouse and a floppy disk drive, you can play your older Mega games on it while you're waiting. This is the most user-friendly interactive CD system. It's called CD Interactive, or you can abbreviate it to CDI, and it's being sold heavily as a complete home entertainment system. Now, because you can get so much information on a CD, when it comes to games, you can really make use of that facility. This is a golf simulation. I'm on the first tee, ready to take my opening shot, but I'm facing in the wrong, the wrong direction. So I'll move this little cursor thing and position myself so I'll shoot it down the middle of the fairway. Now, watch the guy move. Now I've decided what position I want to shoot it from. Look at that. It's like a real fella. I've already chosen the club I want, so now I've just got to give it a right good belt and it should go straight down the middle. There's about 50,000 photographs to choose from on this CD, so wherever my ball has landed, in the water, unfortunately, the uh, CD will be able to pick it out and show me exactly where I went. Of all the formats, I think this golf game is probably one of the best. There are other games around, but the hardware in the CD area is wonderful, but I think it would be fair to say that the software hasn't really caught up yet. You can also play your music CDs on this, and you can get TVs and films soon on CD as well, and the whole system of CDI is compatible with the Kodak Photo CD system that allows you to put your family snaps on a CD at somewhere like Boots. Eventually, the manufacturers are hoping, can you hold this a second? Mm -hmm. They're hoping that instead of a computer, a console, a library full of books, an old shoebox full of snaps and a CD player, you will have one of these. It is a portable 
CD and computer. It's a Sony based Discman. And whilst it can't do all the things that its brother can do, it's getting there and it's portable. Oh. Um, and now for some more games reviews. Magical Quest is yet another game starring Mickey Mouse. This time he's hot on the trail of his missing mate Pluto, who's been snatched by evil Emperor Pete. Which I think you'll agree is a pretty cool name for an emperor. Here's Kathleen. This is a lovely game. It's easy to pick up and very fun to play. You're in an enchanted world so the most unusual things can happen. If you pick up these gold blocks, you can spin them and then you can get coins underneath. If you get this block and then throw it at the treasure chest, there's loads of coins underneath. If you go onto this tomato, it can protect you from spikes, so you just need to walk as fast as the tomato goes. This is an end of level boss. He shoots out these babies and you've got to try to kill them. And if you, you can spin them as well, and if you spin them, you, you can get extra points. If Mickey changes into different costumes, he gets extra magical powers. I love this game, it's just as good as Castle of Illusion. It's nothing special, it's quite fun, but there's nothing original in it. I'm not a great fan of this one. It's not very interesting, it's just an average platform game. And the scores for Magical Quest, the boys gave it an average score of 3 out of 5, but the girls liked it a bit more and they gave it 4 out of 5. After all that conspicuous consumption over Christmas, here's a new game priced at lean $7.99. The Galactic Warrior Rats, who actually look more like Galactic Warrior Globs to me, have a mission to find and destroy a computer which is set to blow up their world. Here's Matthew to help them. This game is fast and full of baddies. Lots of weapons to choose from if you've got enough money. And there's some really good touches in the gameplay. This is a very good looking game in part. Although the music is a bit poor, the sound effects are excellent. It only slows down when the action is very full. Right, I'm just going through the door here. You can pick up credits when you kill enemies. And you can use these towards buying weapons, ammo, coolant which reduces damage from enemies, or orbits which follow you around, adding power to your fire. As you can see, you can't really afford to stop shooting for very long. I think this game's great value and a real challenge. But if you don't like fast shooting games, it's definitely not for you. I like this. It's a playable, nice looking game with great sound and it's a bad game. This is not my sort of game. As soon as you get out of your base, you get shot at. I don't see the attraction in games like this. And the scores for Galactic Warrior Rats, the boys gave it 3 out of 5, and the girls thought it was an average game as well. They gave it 3 out of 5. Whee! Whee! Whoa! Here are some level codes for <laughs> Space Harrier on the Game Gear. <laughs> Right, I'm going to try level nine. I hope you've got your biros ready and join these down. Level nine. Right. Um, hmm. B, F, C, H. Level nine. It works. It works. Hey. <laughs> Beam me up, Strutty. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Live long and prosper, Nam. If you want to record the data blast, set your video recorder now. Last week's competition was to win loads of copies of the new Take That video, Take That and Party. And the winners' names are going across the bottom of the screen now. Congratulations to you. The competition question, you will recall, was what were the names of the two bands the boys were in before they formed Take That? And the answer was The Cutest Rush and Street Beat. This week's competition prize is to win five copies of Lemmings. And the question is, are Lemmings a type of rat, a type of guinea pig, or a type of squirrel. Send your answer on a postcard or a stuck down envelope to the usual address. Mark's competition to reach us no later than next Monday, please. And don't forget to tell us what format you would like Lemmings on. Hope you've enjoyed the programme. We'll see you next week at the same time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.